So have you been working with woven wire mesh and realized you're not exactly sure how it's made? Well, look no further. In this video, we'll take an in-depth look on the construction of woven wire mesh. So stick around. Hey there, what's up? My name's Andrew Gotlar, and the art of weaving has existed for thousands of years. From the origins of basket weaving to the introduction of mechanical looms in the Industrial Revolution to present-day high-speed weaving looms, the concept is primarily the same. So basically, the demand for woven wire goods in the mining and pulp industries in the late 17th century drove the development of the modern weaving loom. Today, there's an endless list of applications for woven wire mesh. Uh, filtration, particle analysis, plastic extrusion, uh, aggregate screening, and architectural mesh are just a handful of examples where we see woven wire mesh used in our everyday lives. And WS Tyler has been a leading supplier of woven wire mesh for over 150 years and has a team of experts that have a comprehensive understanding of the weaving process inside and out. So in this video, we'll go over what woven wire mesh is, what a weaving loom is, how to prepare a loom, what the weaving process looks like, and an understanding of the capabilities of modern weaving technology. Woven wire mesh is a predetermined number of metal wires interlaced together to form a roll or sheet of wire cloth that upholds a specific pattern. When weaving mesh, parameters like diameter, opening or aperture size, micron rating, weave pattern, width and length can be customized to your specific needs. So wire mesh is generally manufactured in one of two ways. If mesh has a larger wire diameter or the ratio between the wire diameter and the opening size is either too large or too small, then it requires a wire that is pre-crimped. In this process, the wires are crimped prior to the weaving process. But for finer wires and where the aspect ratio permits, uh, the wires are crimped during the weaving process itself. But for this video, we'll be focusing on regular non-crimped weaves. A weaving loom is a machine used to weave individual metallic wires to form a roll of woven wire mesh. Traditionally, looms are developed to weave 48, 60, or 72 inch mesh rolls. But more recently, 98 inch or even wider have become available. So generally, a loom consists of a warp beam, a predetermined number of heddle frames, a reed, a rapier to transport the weft wire, and a front take-up mechanism. What does that mean? <laughs> the warp wires are the wires that run lengthwise with the cloth during the weaving process. The weft or shoot wires are the wires that run across the width of the cloth during the weaving process. And so the warp beam is a cylindrical drum that is wound with a specific number of length of warp wires that have yet to be woven, and it's located in the back of the loom. So, for example, a 48 inch loom producing a 10 mesh cloth would need a beam with 480 wires wound on it. The length of each wire would depend on the customer's needs, but would typically range from 600 feet to 6,000 feet. And it should be noted that long production runs can significantly reduce the ratio of setup time versus run time and substantially reduce its cost. A heddle frame is used to separate the individual wires being fed by the warp beam. Each loom contains at least two heddle frames. In a loom that uses two heddle frames, heddle frame one will initially lift half of the warp wires, while heddle frame two pulls the other half down, and the heddle frames change position with each insertion of a weft wire. A rapier band is a mechanism that, during each cycle of the heddle frame motion, feeds a single wire, known as a weft or shoot wire, between the two sets of warp wires. A reed is a piece of tooling that is used to hold the warp wires in the exact spacing while beating the weft wire into place. And lastly, the finished roll of woven wire cloth is wound onto a front take-up mechanism and, depending on the weave specifications and customer requirements, is removed in increments of 100 feet up to a maximum of 1,000 feet. Preparing a weaving loom to produce high quality rolls of wire mesh begins with the raw wire itself. Each wire used to produce fine wire mesh, like 80 to 630 mesh, arrives at the weaving facility on an individual spool. So prior to winding each wire onto a warp beam, these spools are placed onto a rack system, referred to as a creel. The creel holds each of the spools in position while the warp beam is wound. Once the spools are loaded onto the creel, an operator, or beamer, will take a set amount of wires and once they have arranged each wire through a set of tensioning rollers and a beaming reed, will wind a specific number of turns onto the warp beam. The wound beam is then moved to the threading station where the individual wires are threaded through the heddle frames and the reed. 
In a two-frame heddle frame system, the first wire of the beam is placed in the first heddle in heddle frame 1. The second wire is placed in the first heddle in heddle frame 2. The third wire is placed in the second wire heddle in heddle frame 1, and so on. The process is repeated until each and every wire on the beam has been threaded through a heddle frame. The next step in the threading process is to take the wires from the heddle frame and thread them through the reed. And missing just one opening or placing two wires in one opening will compromise the technical integrity of the mesh. So it's not difficult to imagine the precision and patience that is required to ensure that each wire on a 630 mesh beam is placed into the exact reed opening. That's more than 3,000 wires on a 48 inch beam. The quality of the reed determines the accuracy of the opening in the weft or shoot direction. Obviously, the manufacturing tolerance of each reed opening will tell you the final position of the warp wire that it's holding. So it's critical that this piece of tooling is sourced from a high quality supplier. In recent years, and with the introduction of modern weaving technology, there's been significant improvements in the accuracy of the position of the weft wire. It used to be generally accepted that the warp wire spacing was more accurate than the shoot wire spacing. This is no longer the case with the introduction of modern weaving looms and the latest technology. So now the leading weavers can provide levels of mesh and opening accuracy that simply was not possible in looms that were manufactured 20 years ago. Once the beam is wound and the heddle frames and reed are threaded, the whole assembly is transported to a weaving loom. The setup of the loom is then completed by an experienced technician. Once assembled, the weaving process is, for the most part, automatic and seamless. As the loom begins, the warp beam unwinds in very small increments that could be missed with a blink of an eye. At the same time, the front take-up mechanism winds the woven cloth at the same small increment in the same direction. This simultaneous movement allows the loom to maintain a specified tension on the warp wires, which is absolutely critical when producing high quality cloth. As soon as the two beams rotate, heddle frame one pulls half of the warp wires up while heddle frame two drives the other half down. At this time, a rapier, whether a, a two part or a one part rapier, transports a shoot wire between the two sets of warp wires. The shoot wire is typically delivered from a spool of wire on the side of the weaving loom. Once the rapier has returned to its resting position, the reed pushes the shoot wire into its final position and creates a perfect cross section. The reed then returns to its original position and simultaneously the warp beam and front take-up mechanism rotate at the same small increment, the heddle frame changes position, and the loom begins a new cycle. This process is repeated over and over until the entire mesh cloth is woven. The length of time taken to weave a full beam can vary dramatically. While a, a 300 foot beam of 10 mesh can be completed in a matter of hours, a 6,000 feet beam of 630 mesh will run for several months. It's not unusual to see weaving looms that are still in operation after decades of use. The old mechanical looms from the early 20th century were a heavy duty mechanical construction and were built to last. As long as the user is performing general maintenance of the worn parts and not exceeding the capabilities of the loom, they're more than capable of producing acceptable quality industrial woven wire cloth. There's hundreds of weavers across the globe that have the ability to produce high quality woven wire cloth. Conversely, only a handful of weavers have the capability to produce the finest meshes with the finest wires to the highest accuracy level. The weaving industry leaders have taken the responsibility to design, construct, and build their own weaving looms. And because of this, they've stayed at the forefront of the ever-increasing demands of their customer base and developed looms capable of weaving cloth to a quality level never thought possible just 30 years ago. This commitment has supported new and innovative weave types, such as three-dimensional filter cloth that provides significantly improved flow rates while maintaining the same filtration capabilities. The weaving knowledge and industry experience of these companies combined with the advancements and integration of modern technology has resulted in the ongoing development of the weaving equipment that goes well beyond the capabilities of the old mechanical looms. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.